So your new film, uh, in other words, is a bilingual romantic comedy, uh, which yes. I appreciate it, of course. So did this aspect attract you to the project and, and why? And also, what are some of your favorite all-time romantic, romantic comedies? You know, um, well, they brought it to me because I think they wanted a, a unique character. Usually people come to me with an idea of like, hey, here's a character. We would like somebody to add, incorporate their style or something to it you know as you may know or fans know i don't know if they know but being on Saturday Night live and the various movies i've done i like to do every role different you know i don't like to do i'm not a typecast kind of person i like to do different characters and aspects of myself so they uh let me have fun with this character and i think it was very unique and different a little odd you know i guess you could say <laughs> like how you're like yeah i think so uh, and a little bizarre, you know, I think the world needs that. I think comedy needs that, you know, makes things a little different. And, uh, you know, romantic comedies, I've always been a huge fan of romantic comedies. Um, I was actually some, I mean, I do like some of the more, you know, the ones in the eighties were really, really fun. There was that John Hughes era, you know, like the plane strings and automobiles, all those were two men actually, but you know, there was, <laughs> I mean, like the say anything, you know, with John Cusack and, at that genre, um, Ferris Bueller. But my favorite romantic comedies were earlier than that, the Blake Edwards and the, uh, you know, the Billy Wilder comedies, like Roman Holiday with Audrey Hepburn. And, you know, um, I love those. Uh, Sabrina, the original Sabrina, you know, with Audrey Hepburn. Audrey Hepburn was one of the, the, the queen of, like, romantic comedies, I think, you know. There was that era that was really cool. I also liked screwball romantic comedies. There's a director by the name of Preston Sturgis in the 40s, who I admire a great deal and did like Palm Beach Story and, uh, you know, Cary Grant, Philadelphia Story. George, George Cooper was a great director. Um, you know, It Happened One Night, you know, with yes. Uh, yes. Uh, Clark Gable and Claudette Colbert. You know, I really was a big fan of that kind of, uh, you know, the, the ones that created and, and, and made the beginning, the, the railroad tracks, if you will, of, of romantic comedies. You know. Those are those are awesome picks, uh, Mr. Katana. I wanted to ask you uh, before that, uh, before the next question, I wanted to thank you for all the laughs you've provided to me in my, in, you know, especially in college with all your material, the center and night life and and out of the Roxbury, etc. Et so I want to take the opportunity to thank you for all the laughs you you provided, sir. Well, that that means a lot. Thank you. Uh, I it's a pleasure to do that. <laughs> yeah, I, I didn't want to forget uh, in the in the interview. So uh, in the film, uh, you play Mr. Maximilian Woods, like you said, uh, an investor that's looking to support or not support this new matchmaking love app. So I was, right. I was, I was, I was curious, was this character always written like this or did you have enough space to come in and improvise a lot? And because and, uh, like you were the highlight of the film, you were hilarious. Well, it was, it was. Oh, well, thanks. Thanks a lot. Yeah, no, I had a great time doing it. And they allowed me to have a great time, which is most important. You know, um, they did write the character, but they allowed me to have uh, add my own stuff, you know, the bizarre stuff, like wanting to just sit on the table, for example, as opposed to sit in a chair and be a bit of a guru. And, you know, there's a scene where I'm angry at my mother on the phone that I don't want to pay for her anyway, anymore. And that was improvised. So they let me improvise a lot of stuff and they kept that in there. And that's always that's always nice when they do that. So uh, they were great. I mean, the director was fantastic and the, and the cast, they really let me have a great time. And, and that's the most important thing. So, yeah, I, I got to add a lot of stuff. I'm glad there you liked a, it. Yeah, no, there, there was a part in uh, a line uh, without spoilers where you said you're doing a joke with with, uh, with the protagonist that you say like, like a choo-choo like a train with the name. I snorted water out of my oh, nose. Right. Yeah. Was, <laughs> it, was, it was hilarious. So in terms of the matchmaking love app, would you consider yourself personally a tech savvy person like social media apps, internet or, or, or stuff like that, iPhones and iPads? And have you ever been curious enough to try any of the dating apps? Because I remember I filled the, the, the basic eHarmony back in the day. So Oh, yeah? So how, how about you? <laughs> Uh, well, believe it or not, I uh, I do. I'm in a relationship right now with the girl that I've been with. She's living with me now. Or we've been living together. Uh, she just moved in recently. We've been together for like a year. And we actually met on an app, which surprisingly. And I thought awesome. that could never happen. Yeah, the app is called Raya. And uh, we met on this app. And, uh, you know, we hit it off. And uh, so it worked, you know. It was, I, I, it's unbelievable. It actually worked, you know. Um, but, yeah, so... Um, 
she has an Instagram account. I wasn't very good at it. And she's taught me, you know, how to <laughs> you know, about algorithms and all that yeah. stuff. So I become a bit savvy about that. But yeah, we, we fell in love and we're together now. And we're really happy. So we're in the back wow. of the car right now. So things are not as good as I could be driving. <laughs> That's awesome. That so so yeah. That that worked in in real life. That's awesome. Uh, so uh, moving from that question, uh, one of the things that in other words explores is uh, the concept of love has no boundaries. It turns into even language. So I want to ask you if you believe in that concept in real life. Yeah, I do. I do believe it has no boundaries, and I do believe it breaks through any kind of language or anything barriers because love has its own language. You know. And it is, uh, I think everyone speaks it. Or if they're at that place in their life, ready to be in love or fall in love or meet somebody, uh, which you never know. You never know when that's going to happen. I was in a place in my life where I, I don't think I was, uh, I wasn't looking for love. You know, I really wasn't. I was looking for maybe just uh, some companionship a little bit, like a, a friend, but not, uh, I wasn't ready to fall in love again. And I, I, I was like, you know what, that's probably not going to happen again that's absolutely fine with me. I'm at a good place. I'm very, I, I love myself and I'm, that's a great relationship too. And, uh, I think that's what, why it became a good relationship, uh, right now, the person that I'm with now. And that's, that's how it worked. But, uh, yeah, I, I think it breaks all boundaries. Everybody speaks it, you know, but it's not, it's not, it's a, it's not that often. It's very hard to, uh, find that person. I mean, it's almost impossible. I thought like, and when it happens, It's amazing. It's like, you can't believe, like, it really is that feeling of like, wow, love really is incredible. I mean, it makes everything when they say, oh, it makes the world go around and, you know, you can't buy love. All those things they say, you know, it's true. You really can't. You can't. There's nothing better than that feeling of companionship, you know, someone that understands you and you understand. And it just it's just part of your life becomes a different level of life. I'm not a father. I've never had a child. And I also hear the same thing in a way, you know, you kind of live vicariously. You live for, you, are, you have a child? Yeah, I got two girls, eight, yeah, ten, and girls. eight. So, yeah. Yeah, I hear you stop thinking about yourself. <laughs> Most definitely, yeah. Yeah. So uh, I'm so happy to hear that, sir. I'm, I'm so happy for you. Uh, Thank you. Uh, uh, so before letting you go, uh, I wanted to ask you with this 2020, weird 2020, uh, what did, what have, Just what kind of stuff have you been doing at home to take your mind off, you know, exercise or for entertainment during this, you know, current pandemic of COVID-19? What are you, what are you doing at home besides work? Uh, I've been watching a lot of episodes of 90 Day Fiance. It's my new favorite show on uh, <laughs> uh, a lot of television. Uh, uh, you know, uh, I've been working on some projects. I have some things in development and, um, you know, spending time with my girlfriend and my dog. You know, I have. If you go on my Instagram account, which is Chris Catan Official, you can check out what I'm doing. And uh, it's not a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to make the most of it. I'm trying to make the most of it. But I, I think, uh, you know, it's funny how we are all quarantined. Everybody, it's just, it's amazing how it's affecting everyone. You know, not just, uh, you know, you always think it's your thing. You think it individually. You always think about yourself. And this is absolutely not the time to think about yourself it's about thinking about others and i'm fortunate to be with a wonderful person right now uh during this time you know i, I really got lucky and plus we have um, we're i'm glad that we have uh performances like yourself like uh in the film so we can laugh and take your our minds yeah. off so i appreciate that again uh before letting you go if you would allow me to geek out for a second before uh, hanging up sure. will it be okay for you to join me in a couple of small head bops a la Doug and Steve Butawi, it would be an honor. It would definitely improve my 2020 exponentially. Sure. Okay. Well, uh, if, 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 if you want me, I'll sing it. I'll sing it and then we can head bob. Which way is it? Just a little head bob. I guess I'll go left. You want okay. to go left? Uh, yeah, let's go this way. Are right, you ready? Do you okay. want to do it to music? I'll sing it. I'll sing it. Okay, you yeah. sing it. How's yeah, okay. your voice? It's good? Uh, it's horrible. It's horrible, sir. Okay, perfect. Okay, so, let's go. Uh, so, so <laughs> your left is this way? Yeah. Like on camera? No. Yeah, right. I'll do I'll do it this way so we on camera. So we'll just say Okay, you ready? Okay, so here we go. Okay. One, two. <laughs> Thank you, by the way. Sorry. Okay. What is love? Baby, don't hurt me. <laughs> don't hurt me. Uh, there you go. There's the notes there you. Yeah. 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 All right, there you go. Sir, I appreciate cool. it. 
That was an awesome interview. Thank you for taking all of your You're time welcome. and talk to me. Of Stay course. safe. Wish you the best always, sir. And thank you again. I will. Don't forget your mask. <laughs> there you go. Nice shirt.